Gender. You, Irina, mentioned a great enemy to marriage today. The theory of gender. Today, there is a world war to destroy marriage. Today, there are ideological colonizations which destroy, not with weapons, but with ideas. Therefore, there is a need to defend ourselves from ideological colonizations. Yet another challenge is posed by the various forms of an ideology of gender that denies the difference and reciprocity in the nature of a man and a woman, and envisions a society without sexual difference, thereby eliminating the anthropological basis of the family. This ideology leads to educational programs and legislative enactments that promote a personal identity and emotional intimacy radically separated from the biological difference between male and female. Consequently, human identity becomes the choice of the individual, one which can also change over time. It is a source of concern that some ideologies of this sort which seek to respond to what are, at times, understandable aspirations, manage to assert themselves as absolute and unquestionable, even dictating how children should be raised. It needs to emphasize that biological sex and the sociocultural role of sex, gender, can be distinguished but not separated. On the other hand, the technological revolution in the field of human procreation has introduced the ability to manipulate the reproductive act, making it independent of sexual relationship between a man and a woman. In this way, human life and parenthood have become modular and separable realities, subject mainly to the wishes of individuals or couples. It is one thing to be understanding of human weakness and the complexities of life, and another to accept ideologies that attempt to sunder what are inseparable aspects of reality. Let us not fall into the sin of trying to replicate the Creator. We are creatures, not omnipotent. Creation is prior to us and must be received as a gift. At the same time, we are called to protect our humanity, and this means, in the first place, accepting it and respecting it as it was created. The recent proposal to advance the dignity of a person by radically eliminating sexual difference, and as a result our understanding of man and woman, is not right. Instead of combating wrongful interpretations of sexual difference that would diminish the fundamental importance of that difference for human dignity, such a proposal would simply eliminate it by proposing procedures and practices that would make it irrelevant for a person's development and for human relationships. But the utopia of the neuter eliminates both human dignity in sexual distinctiveness and the personal nature of the generation of new life. The biological and psychological manipulation of sexual difference, which biomedical technology can now make appear as a simple matter of personal choice, which it is not, runs the risk of dismantling the energy source that feeds the covenant between man and woman, making it creative and fruitful. The acceptance of our bodies as God's gift is vital for welcoming and accepting the entire world as a gift from the Father and our common home, whereas thinking that we enjoy absolute power over our own bodies turns often subtly into thinking that we enjoy absolute power over creation. Learning to accept our body, to care for it, and to respect its fullest meaning is an essential element of any genuine human ecology. Also, valuing one's own body in its femininity or masculinity is necessary if I am going to be able to recognize myself in an encounter with someone who is different. In this way, we can joyfully accept the specific gifts of another man or woman, the work of God the Creator, and find mutual enrichment. It is not a healthy attitude which would seek to cancel out sexual difference because it no longer knows how to confront it. When humanity, instead of being custodian, considers itself to be the master, it becomes creator of a second ignorance and moves towards destruction. Consider nuclear weapons and the possibility to annihilate, in a few instances, a huge number of people. Consider also genetic manipulation, the manipulation of life or gender theory that does not recognize the order of creation. Think also of those who restore the Tower of Babel 
and destroy creation. This attitude leads humanity to commit a new sin against God the Creator. The real protection of creation has nothing to do with ideologies that consider humanity an accident or a problem to be eliminated. God has placed men and women at the head of creation and has entrusted with them the earth. The design of God the Creator is inscribed in nature. There is the ideology of gender. In books, too, children learn that they can choose their sex, because gender, being a man or a woman, is a choice and not a fact of nature. That favors this error. But let's talk about things as they are. Marriage is a man and a woman. That's the precise term. Women's Ordination This problem that we are experiencing of selectivity with respect to the council has been repeated throughout history with other councils. It makes me think of a group of bishops who, after Vatican I, left. A group of lay people, groups to continue the true doctrine that was not that of Vatican I. We are the true Catholics. Today they ordain women. The strictest attitude to guard the faith without the magisterium of the church leads you to ruin. Please, no concessions to those who try to present a catechesis that does not agree with the magisterium of the church. As for the ordination of women in the Catholic Church, the last clear word was given by St. John Paul II, and this holds. And why can a woman not enter ordained ministry? It is because the Petrine principle has no place for that. As far as women's ordination is concerned, the Church has spoken and said no. John Paul II said it, but with a definitive formulation. That door is closed. Sodomy In discussing the dignity and mission of the family, the Synod Fathers observed that, as for proposals to place unions between homosexual persons on the same level as marriage, there are absolutely no grounds for considering homosexual unions to be in any way similar or even remotely analogous to God's plan for marriage and family. It is unacceptable that local churches should be subject to pressure in this matter and that international bodies should make financial aid to poor countries dependent on the introduction of laws to establish, quote, marriage between persons of the same sex. The Argentinian people will face in the coming weeks a situation whose outcome may gravely injure the family. This refers to the project of the law regarding marriage of the persons of the same sex. What is at stake here is the identity and survival of the family, father, mother, and children. At stake are the lives of so many children who will be discriminated against in advance, depriving them of the human maturation that God wanted to be given with a father and a mother. At stake is the outright rejection of the law of God, engraved also in our hearts. Here also is the envy of the devil, by which sin entered into the world, which cunningly seeks to destroy the image of God. Man and woman received the mandate to grow, multiply, and subdue the earth. Do not be naive. It is not a simple political struggle. It is the destructive attempt towards God's plan. It is not a mere legislative project. This is only the instrument, but a movement of the father of lies that seeks to confuse and deceive the children of God. Jesus tells us that to defend ourselves against this lying accuser, he will send us the spirit of truth. Today, the country in this situation needs the special assistance of the Holy Spirit, to that he may put the light of truth in the midst of the darkness of error. It needs this advocate to defend us from the spell of so many sophistries with which this legal project seeks to be justified, and which confuses and deceives even people of goodwill. Let us remember what God himself said to his people in a time of great anguish. This war is not yours but God's. May they help defend and accompany us in this war of God. Note, the following is not actually directly from Pope Francis. Rather, it is a responsium from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. However, it was personally approved by Pope Francis 
and therefore is a formal part of his teaching magisterium. It is the only quote in this video that is not personally from Francis. But he, God, does not and cannot bless sin. He blesses sinful man so that he may recognize that he is a part of his plan of love and allow himself to be changed by him. He, in fact, takes us as we are, but never leaves us as we are. For the above-mentioned reasons, the Church does not have, and cannot have, the power to bless unions of persons of the same sex, in the sense intended above. The Sovereign Pontiff Francis, at the audience granted to the undersigned secretary of this congregation, was informed and gave his assent to the publication of the above-mentioned Responsium ad Dubium, with the annexed explanatory note. What they are proposing is not marriage. It is an association, but it is not marriage. It is necessary to say things very clearly, and we must say this. Demographics. I will follow your work closely, because the theme of birth rate represents a real social emergency. It is not immediately perceptible, like other issues that occupy the news, but it is very urgent. Fewer and fewer children are being born, and this means impoverishing everyone's future. Italy, Europe, and the West are impoverishing their future. For years, Italy has thus had the lowest number of births in Europe. In what is becoming the old continent, no longer because of its glorious history, but because of its advanced age, this country of ours, where every year it is as if a city of over 200,000 inhabitants were disappearing, in 2020 reached the lowest number of births since national unity, not only because of COVID, but of the continuous progressive downward trend, an increasingly harsh winter. Yet all this does not yet seem to have attracted general attention, which is focused on the present and the immediate. In Italy, a decision has been taken to turn into law an allowance defined as unique and universal for every child that is born. I express my appreciation to the authorities and hope that this allowance will meet the concrete needs of families who have made and are making so many sacrifices and will mark the start of social reforms that put children and families at the center. If families are not the center of the present, there will be no future, but if families start again, everything will start again. Regarding this concern, rather, this hemorrhaging of vocations, I have spoken at the plenary of the Congregation for the Institutes of Consecrated Life and the Societies of Apostolic Life, explaining that it is the poisoned fruit of the culture of the temporary, of relativism, and the dictatorship of money, which distances the young from consecrated life, alongside certainly the tragic reduction in births. This demographic winter, as well as the scandals and lukewarm witness, how many seminaries, churches, and monasteries will be closed in the coming years due to the lack of vocations. Furthermore, the decline in population due to a mentality against having children and promoted by world politics of reproductive health care creates not only a situation in which the relationship between generations is no longer insured, but also a danger that, over time, this decline will lead to economic impoverishment and a loss of hope in the future. The development of biomedical technology has also had a major impact on the birth rate. Added to this are other factors such as industrialization, the sexual revolution, the fear of overpopulation, and economic problems. Consumerism may also deter people from having children, simply so that they can maintain a certain freedom and lifestyle. The upright consciences of spouses who have been generous in transmitting life may lead them, for sufficiently serious reasons, to limit the number of their children. Yet, precisely for the sake of this dignity of conscience, the Church strongly rejects the forced state intervention in favor of contraception, sterilization, and even abortion. Such measures are unacceptable even in places with high birth rates. 
yet also in countries with disturbingly low birth rates, we see politicians encouraging them. As the bishops of Korea have said, this is to act in a way that is self-contradictory and to neglect one's duty. Current consumerism seeks to fill the void of human relationships with even more sophisticated commodities. Loneliness is big business in our time, but in this way it generates a famine of happiness. This is not a good thing. Think of the demographic winter, for example, and how it relates to all this. The demographic winter, where the population of all countries is going down significantly, because instead of having children, people are giving greater attention to having emotional relationships with dogs and cats. We have to start procreating again. And speaking of families, I have a concern, a real concern, at least here in Italy, the demographic winter. It seems that many couples have lost the inspiration to have children, and many couples prefer not to have children or to have only one child. Think about this. It is a tragedy. A few minutes ago, I saw they were speaking about this serious problem, the demographic winter, on the television program, in his image. Let us do everything possible to regain an awareness, to overcome this demographic winter that goes against our families, against our country, even against our future. In advance of the World Meeting of Families, which will take place in a few days' time, it calls our attention to the low birth rates in Europe, and especially in Italy. This demographic winter is very serious. Please be attentive to it. There is a very close link between this regenerative poverty and the loss of a sense of beauty of the family. Witness to the social dignity of marriage will become persuasive precisely by a witness that is attractive. Abortion The problem of abortion. Abortion is more than an issue. Abortion is murder. Abortion without hinting. Whoever performs an abortion kills. You take an embryology textbook of those students that study in medical school. At the third week of conception, at the third many times before the mother notices, all the organs are already there. All of them. Even the DNA. It's a human life. Period. This human life must be respected. This principle is so clear. And to those who can't understand it, I would ask two questions. Is it right? Is it fair to kill a human life to solve a problem? Scientifically, it is a human life. Second question. Is it right to hire a hitman to solve a problem? I said this publicly. When I did, I said it to cope. I have wanted to repeat it. End period. Don't continue with strange discussions. Scientifically, it's a human life. The textbooks teach us that. But is it right to take it out to solve a problem? This is why the church is so strict on this issue, because accepting this is kind of like accepting daily murder. A head of state was telling me that the decline in population started with the age of abortion, because in those years, there was such a strong abortion law that six million abortions were performed, and this left a very large decline in the society of that country. Now, let's return to the person who is not in the community and not able to take communion because he's outside of the community. This is not a penalty. You are outside. Communion is to unite the community. Sad to say, some countries and international institutions are promoting abortion as one of the so-called essential services provided in the humanitarian response to the pandemic. It is troubling to see how simple and convenient it has become for some to deny the existence of a human life as a solution to problems that can and must be solved for both the mother and her unborn child. A contrary approach even permits the termination of human life in the maternal womb, in the name of safeguarding other rights. But how can an action that ends an innocent and defenseless life in its blossoming stage be therapeutic, civilized, or supposedly human? I ask you, is it right to do away with a human life in order to solve a problem? Is it right to hire a hitman to solve a problem? One cannot.
it is not right to do away with a human being, however small, in order to solve a problem. It is like hiring a hitman to solve a problem. Among the vulnerable for whom the Church wishes to care with particular love and concern are unborn children, the most defenseless and innocent among us. Nowadays, efforts are made to deny their human dignity and to do with them whatever one pleases, taking their lives and passing laws, preventing anyone from standing in the way of this. Reason alone is sufficient to recognize the inviolable value of each single human life. But if we also look at the issue from the standpoint of faith, every violation of the personal dignity of the human being cries out in vengeance to God and is an offense against the creator of the individual. Precisely because this involves the internal consistency of our message about the value of the human person, the Church cannot be expected to change her position on this question. I want to be completely honest in this regard. This is not something subject to alleged reforms or modernizations. It is not progressive to try to resolve problems by eliminating a human life. Marriage and Family The family is the foundation of coexistence and a guarantee against social fragmentation. Children have a right to grow up in a family with a father and a mother capable of creating a suitable environment for the child's growth and emotional development. A good father knows how to wait and knows how to forgive from the depths of his heart. Certainly he also knows how to correct with firmness. He is not a weak father, submissive and sentimental. The father knows how to correct without humiliating. It is the one who knows how to protect without sparing himself. Once I heard a father at a meeting on marriage say, Sometimes I have to strike the children lightly, but never in the face, so as not to humiliate them. How beautiful! He has a sense of dignity. He must punish, but he does it in a just way and moves on. There are Judases who sell their brothers and sisters, exploiting them for work without a just pay, without recognizing their duties. Many times they even sell their dearest things. I think that in order to have a greater convenience, a person is able to take his parents away and not see them any more, to take them far away to safe old age homes and not to visit them any more. He is selling them. There is a very common saying that such a person is capable of selling his or her own mother, and they sell her. Now they feel at peace. They are kept away. You take care of them. Hell and the Devil Our Lady foretold and warned us about a way of life that is godless and indeed profanes God in his creatures. Such a life frequently proposes and imposes risks leading to hell. Going back to the devil, someone says that I speak too much about the devil, but he is real. I believe in him. Eh? Some say, no, he is a myth. I don't go along with myths. I go along with reality. I believe it. And I feel that I cannot conclude without saying a word to the absent bosses today. To those absent but central figures, the men and women of the Mafia, please change your lives, convert, stop, cease to do evil. We are praying for you. Convert, I ask it on my knees. It is for your own good. This life you are living now, it won't bring you pleasure, it won't give you joy, it won't bring you happiness. The power, the money that you possess now from so many dirty transactions, from so many Mafia crimes, is blood-stained money. It is power-soaked in blood, and you cannot take it with you to the next life. Convert, there is still time, so that you don't end up in hell. That is what awaits you if you continue on this path. You had a father and a mother. Think of them. Cry a little and convert. Church Teaching The Church has already spoken quite clearly on this. It was unnecessary to return to it, just as I don't speak about cheating, lying, or other matters, which the Church has a clear teaching. 